Okay, guys, Robbie, where are we at today? Springville. Springville? Yep. It looks like a lot of old trucks and a lot of old metal things. I hear that a lot about Springville. So what are we doing down here on the west side of Springville? Part two of Ray Gibby. Part two, Ray Gibby? Raymond Gibby. And this is the foundry. That's what I'm told. And it's called Bayer Braun Fine Art Foundry. In Springville. In Springville. <laughs> so here we go, guys. Hey guys, hey, what up, Brandon? Foundry? We come to see the foundry. Oh, good, you're in the right place. And where is the foundry? It's here. In Springville? It's a, yeah, we're in Springville. All right. Is yeah. that okay? Springville's okay. Hey, Payson, if it was in Payson, I wouldn't. Yeah, if it was in Payson, there you go. All right, so let us let our viewers know what we're doing here. Well, right now I'm I'm pulling a uh, a wax out of a mold. This is, I just got done pouring the wax and it oh. cooled off and now I'm... Oh, there's the bear. Pulling yeah. it out here. Looks like scrambled eggs. Well, this job doesn't make me hungry. <laughs> yeah. Where's the beef? Oh, look at that. Oh. Look at that. Where does this process start? Well, to make to make the mold, let's head, let's head up to molding right now. Well, let's do it. Here okay. we go. Ooh, I'm a little hungry. It's about breakfast time. You want, you want some of that? But this looks like banana cream pudding. Well, this will clog oh. you up, so I wouldn't oh, eat that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mmm, good. But my stomach don't feel so good. Yeah. The, 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 what this is, this is the this the material that is actually all dried up right now, but this is the material that we use to put over the top of a clay sculpture in order to create a rubber mold. So yeah. this is what we saw down there. This is that yeah. scrambled egg stuff. Yeah. Right now it doesn't, what, what we need to do is put a plaster mold over the top of that. And we don't have one here with us, but you saw it down there. Uh, we have a plaster mold that goes over the top of this in order to be able to keep the whole thing rigid. And this line right here, this is a registration line. This will be cut open and split right there. That's where the, the mold uh, <coughs> separates so that uh, we can get the, the sculpture out in the first place and then later on we'll be able to get a wax mold out of that. So right now there's a wax mold inside here? Right now it's clay. This clay is the mold. original clay sculptures on the inside. Okay, yes sir. Interesting. Yeah. Now do you have to wear any, of, any equipment that will keep you from getting sick? Uh, not at this stage. This is all pretty benign uh, stuff. It's just rubber. You know. Oh, okay. Yeah, just rubber. And it's, it's put together with uh, a uh, liquid rubber with a catalyst, and so it takes uh, some time to set up, but then it's it's just solid. Liquids. You're right. So right now there's clay in there. You split it open, you get the clay out, you pour inside here, and that creates the rubber mold. Pour rubber or pour wax into. Pour the, wax into that creates the, the wax mold that That's we right. saw then. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Let's cool. keep moving. Where are we going next, bud? Well, let's go back down to wax. All right. Okay. So after the uh, rubber mold is made up in the molding area. This is what it looks like, and you have the plaster mold on the outside and the rubber on the inside, and you can see how it's registered back together with these bolts. And uh, that's what creates the pattern uh, to later become the bronze. And what, what would happen at this point is you take wax out of this uh, liquid wax pot and it would pour into that rubber mold. And then it gets spun around like this and poured out again. And that creates a hollow uh, cast of the original sculpture. So the plaster just holds the rubber together so you, it doesn't move around and whatnot? That's right, yeah. Okay. Yep. yep, and then when it's all cooled down, you have several layers on it, then these bolts come out, you separate the plaster and the rubber, and it'll reveal that uh, the, the wax. So if I understand right, the bear then is hollow inside? Yeah, yeah, the one we pulled out earlier, it's hollow on the inside. Oh, okay. Yep. That's kind of like at Easter when we get those chocolate 
Easter bunnies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They're Halloween. Where we, where we felt like we were gypped, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we felt like I we was were, okay with that. We felt Chocolate. Like we were gyp, right? Yeah. yeah. But when you get a bronze from me, it's not a gyp. There you go. You, you, you want them hollow, otherwise you'd never be able to pick it up out oh, of the gallery. Wow, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, where are we going next, guy? Well, I think it's time to go get the uh, the wax touched up. Let's do it. Right. You know what, Ray? Yes, sir. Yesterday we had uh, baby back ribs mm -hmm. for dinner. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how long it took to cook them. As I walked in here today, and with these hanging right here, these look like baby back ribs. You want to sample them? I don't want to sample them, but <laughs> as I walk through the different rooms here. Uh, I'm seeing a thing going on here over and over. I know, I'm hungry. Every department he gets hungry in. Mm, feed me. <laughs> Chocolate, hollow Easter thing, I'm hungry. So, we, oh. got the, we got the bearer laying on the table. Yeah, let's, get, let's focus again. That's here. hollow. Yeah, this is the hollow bear. Oh, see how it's hollow there. So we just pulled this out of the mold and there's lots of uh, defects that happen. It's not like the, the, uh, the original sculpture because if you remember there, there's a registration line. Oh, yeah, so yeah, now yeah. We're, in the, we're in the wax chasing department and we use these tools to... Uh, I like it, the dental office? Yeah, they're little, little dental type tools mm -hmm. to scrape the wax off. Yeah. For the record, I don't like this particular tool at the dental office. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, they, they uh, tell you you shouldn't put sharp things in your mouth, and then they go and do it themselves. And you pay money for it. Mm-hmm. And we don't let Rob handle sharp implements. True enough. <laughs> We've learned our lesson Let there. me move these over here to this side. That's right. Beautiful. So in this stage, we, uh, we go and get that, that seam off there, and then this tool actually has the, uh, the ability to, do, to make texture on that side, too. And that uh, texture mimics what was originally done in the, uh, in the sculpture when it was in clay. Okay. And then in some cases, little pieces break off and we can go in and re-sculpt those. So a, a wax artist will go in and, and fix, like right here you can see that the uh, oh, bottom on jaw. on the lower jaw. Yeah. Yeah, so someone needs to have quite a bit of artistic ability in this stage of the uh, department to be able to uh, recreate what the, uh, what the artist sculpted originally. Okay, Ray. Yes, sir. Where are we moving to next? Well, we actually are staying right here for a minute. Because after you, we, we wax chase it, we, we clean have to, it all up, it's all ready to go again. Yeah, yeah, and I normally wouldn't do this at this point because I've got a lot more cleaning to do still. But then we would take these wax bars here. Oh. And these get bent and shaped into position and then cut. You take one of these uh, sprue cutters and these will get attached to the bottom of this and we'll attach them in different places and this will become the gating system later on for the bronze to flow through and feed the sculpture. Oh, okay. okay. A wax cup will be here and that's what the bronze will be poured into. And it's kind of hard to imagine it now because we have to get to the next stage in order to be able to see how that works. And this okay. section is called what? So this is where we make the ceramic sculpture, or the ceramic molds. Okay? They call it the slurry room, and the reason why is because you put a ceramic slurry, uh, kind of a liquid ceramic, over the top of the sculpture. And uh, uh, they, for example, you can see how these have gotten a ceramic slurry, and then they've gotten a sand coating over the top of them. So I brought this little piece of wax. It's not a full, uh, it's not ready to go necessarily. We normally have a cup on the bottom of this. But uh, I brought this just to kind of demonstrate how that works. A little demo. What's that? And we're all about demo. Let's see yeah, it. We're all about demo so we can get the full effect here. So at this stage, you just take it, and then we go inside here. This is ceramic slurry. It's yellow because it has a dye in it, and the dye helps us know when it's fully dried before you move on to the next coat. And then it just drips off for a minute here. That looks like that banana cream pudding again. I know, it's uh, very tempting. You just want to jump right in there, right? Yeah. Stop. All right, let's back up this way and uh, get a coat on it. And this is a very fine zircon sand that picks up all the detail. And that's the first coat. 
to do that about eight more times in order to create a thick enough layer to be able to pour bronze into eventually. Would you dip it again, then coat it again? I would wait for it to dry for a day, and then after it's dried out, then we'll go and dip it again, and coat it again, dip it again, coat it again. To eventually you have that. That's right. Huh? Okay. So when I had my foundry in Arkansas, it used to take about eight days in order to be able to get one of these done. We live Because we live up in a dry desert climate, you can actually get three dips a day on, on one of these. Uh, dries out every uh, three to four hours. Cool. Yeah. So if I hang around Robbie, I can get one dip a day. There you go. <laughs> no dipping from the pool here. <laughs> yeah, one dip a day. Okay, we're going to take a break right here, guys. And you know, go get something healthy. Maybe some banana cream pudding. Yeah. Oh, that's healthy. All right, we're back in a moment. Okay, I don't know much about foundry work, but I do know this. It's hot in this next section, and it's loud. Yes. So help our viewers, where are we at? Well, right now they're just pulling the, uh, the bronze out of the crucible, and they're gonna set it down and wait for it to uh, get to the right temperature to pour the bronze into the shells. And the right temp is what? The right temperature is uh, roughly around 1,950 degrees. Oh, wow. Yeah. So cool. Nothing. Now I noticed that the workers are all geared up with heat resistant. Well, you can see how hot the crucible is there. They have to wear these uh, volcano suits just to keep them from uh, burning up. And the crucible is the bowl that it's poured into. Yeah, that's right. It's holding all the bronze in there. These guys won't have to go to the gym after to get their workout. Well, they'll be plenty sweaty, so it'll look like they went to the gym anyway. But it's, oh, it's oh. physical work. It's way physical it's, work. Uh, well, you can see they have they have uh, equipment that helps them lift the bronze, uh -huh. and so that actually will help them do it in a controlled way, so they don't spill the bronze. It's very much more, much safer that way. We're just thinking. Yeah. Our viewers are always wondering about cost. Yes. <laughs> what does bronze cost these days? Well, just the uh, for a raw bronze ingot. Uh, not the bronze sculpture, but just the, the raw material. You're talking about maybe three fifty to four dollars a pound. So if you consider that a sculpture averages maybe around a uh, one of these. Yeah, one of these guys right that, here. This is an go, go and lift that up. And see how that feels. Oh wow. So what's the longest the guys will spend in this room? At one given time. On, on, on average, it usually takes about 15 minutes to do a casting, but it takes a lot more time to prepare the casting. So one guy, before we get to a casting day, he'll spend almost his whole day in this area burning out the wax and getting the shells ready just to, just to cast the wax. So it's not really super hot summer right now, but with all this heat in the middle of the summer, what are the average temperatures in this room here? Uh, it can get up to around 140 degrees. And you're in it all day long? Uh, they try and take his breaks when they can, and they try to be, be very hydrated too. But yeah, it's, a, it's a rough day. So you're not going to be a wimp and work at the foundry? Uh, I did my time. Did you? <laughs> you paid your dues. <laughs> I, I, I've got about 20 years foundry experience. So Ooh, yeah. that's small. So at this point, you're going to, he's taking temperature. And you'll notice he's using two pyrometers. I saw that. And the reason why he's doing that is because it's critical that they get the right temperature. If one of those pyrometers fails, then they have a backup. If they miss the temperature at the right time, they won't be able to pour the bronze at the exact temperature that it needs to go into the shell and they'll lose the casting. This is the point in the process where they can actually lose thousands and thousands of dollars if they don't get it right the first time. Oh, he just opened what? He just opened up, that's the melt furnace, and it's also the heat up furnace. And he's just pulled out this uh, shell here. You'll notice it's very big. That means they need to have the bronze pour at a very hot temperature in order for it to be very liquid. Oh. It'll fill it up. And what? then you'll notice that the shells will get smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes along. That's and right. that's actually my bear that just came out. Oh, there's the bear. Yeah, that's it right there. Now, 
what happens to the wax when the hot. So we didn't get a chance to see this because it happened last Friday, but they actually already melted out all the wax out of every shell. Oh. So they have to be extremely careful while they're pouring. He told me that a little, if a, a little splash comes up under their sleeve or under their glove. Yeah, they wear the protective bit, uh, coats to be able to avoid, first of all, just the heat of the bronze coming off that is very hot, but they also have spats to avoid spills on their feet, gloves to avoid getting blisters while they're working on this, and so um, they do everything they can to protect their, themselves. Because it's a no mistake job, no doubt about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, you need to get good guys who are very responsible and know what they're doing. Now back in the other section, I asked you if it was hollow, like the chocolate Easter bunnies. That's right. Are they hollow? Each one of these are hollow. That uh, slurry uh, cer ceramic shell that was applied to the wax filled in the inside of the sculpture and the outside. That way the inside can remain hollow. So when it goes into those those uh, wax, you, you remember the wax right. bars? Yeah. Those became a hollow channel for the wax to go, or for the bronze to go in and fill in the hollow sculpture. Gotcha. All right, so we're going to move to the next section. Okay, let's go. All right, Ray. Looks like those uh, baby back ribs again, but they're white this time. I'm going to take you to lunch after this. I <laughs> have so long. <laughs> So uh, what we have right now, this is, these are the castings that have already been poured into the ceramic and the next stage we're going to lose the ceramic shell but it's going to reveal the bronze. The bronze underneath the ceramic isn't brown. Well the, the bronze isn't brown because it's got a lot of carbon on the outside. So. Ah. Oh. Where are we moving next? Now we're headed on to uh, where we cut off the spruce. All right, now you mentioned the term. If I heard you right, because it was pretty loud in there, you're gonna go in there and cut the spruces? Yeah, we're gonna, no spruces, we're gonna cut spruce. 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 How do you spell that? I don't get paid to know how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what's actually happened here is it, the, this sprue has already been cut off right there and right there. There's only one left that uh, hasn't been cut off, and that's right there. That's not part of the sculpture, so that needs to be removed. And it's so tight in there, I can't use a grinding tool, so we use a plasma cutter to cut it off instead. Plasma? Plasma. That's, that's blood. Well, sometimes it takes blood, too, so you know. <laughs> Safety glasses. And I notice you've got your uh, T-Man shirt on. Yes, yes. i, I got to keep myself looking pretty, so I uh, have these uh, long leather uh, sleeves and that keeps the spray from getting on my my arm. But what about here? How yeah, can... what about your chest? <clears throat> In my defense, I was left unsupervised. <laughs> uh, I've tried to defend That's something, you know. uh, something you'd say. Uh, Take a hammer and knock it off or something? There it is right there. Oh. 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 Sorry, I couldn't see yet. <laughs> All right, we're going to take another break. And wow, it's getting pretty close to lunch, isn't it, Robbie? So ready. Wow, so go get something healthy, like? I'll be honest, I've been on a frosted mini wheat binge lately. I don't know why, I just it's my addiction. Not healthy at all. Ooh, I like I love cats, so go get a kit cat. Now we're over to this metal table to do what? Well, we're gonna fix the piece and get it like the original. If you, you remember earlier, we talked about how there's holes in the sculpture from the airflow. That's right, airflow so that slurry will dry. Well now I've got to put these uh, holes back together. So this was cut out in wax and that's going to be welded back on in metal. Okay. Okay. But I don't want to have a big weld there so after I get done welding 
I'm going to use pneumatic tools to grind off that weld and make it look like the original clay sculpture. Like you did with the wax. That's right. Okay, remember when I asked you about bronze being brown? This is kind of a beige. Yeah, so this is actually the real color of bronze. That, th when you see it brown, that's, that's a different thing. This is the real color of bronze. This is when it's been all metal chased, welded, retextured. There was actually a seam going right through here and it's been re, uh, refinished so that it looks uh, like the original like the original clay. So Raymond, is this one of your pieces? Yeah, this is mine. This, uh, this piece is actually getting finished up in this next week. It's gonna be shipped out to California. This is the Willie Rofe Award, and uh, this is uh, being awarded to both the top uh, high school and college football player. Willie Rofe himself, he was uh, a, uh, Hall of Famer in the NFL. Okay, I actually got to meet him a few months ago and had breakfast with him. That was pretty cool. Wow. And then this one here is Darren McFadden. Oh yeah. And he played obviously for the Razorbacks. He's got the Razorback on the side there. But then he went on to play for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So I made an award uh, to honor the people that uh, football player that played in his position also. All righty. Well, we're finally to the area your brother-in-law told me to make sure we got in the show. And this is the patina. This is the patina. This is how bronze gets its color. So like you mentioned several times, uh, people think of bronzes as being a brown color. You see the Shiny old Remingtons brown. and the old Russells, they're usually dark brown. Well, that's actually an effect that is uh, created through using different chemicals. In that case, it would be a sulfur and a uh, ferric nitrate, okay? So a patina artist needs to be both an artist and have knowledge about how chemicals work and how they react with uh, the bronze. Are you gonna give us a little demo? Yeah, if you want me to, I'd be happy to. All right, let's show our viewers how we do a patina. Okay. So I'm putting uh, sulfur on here and that's what gives you all the dark color and the depth into the bronze. And as you can see, it's a reaction. It's not painting. This cuts down, or it stops the reaction so it doesn't continue to darken. And then I want to bring out some highlights. And so I'm using a Scotch-Brite to just go over the surface lightly. And that'll bring out some of the, the bronze color. Okay, this is a ferric, ferric nitrate. This is basically rusty nails that's been uh, exposed to a, uh, an acid that broke it down to the point where it became a liquid. And the ferric nitrate will react with the sulfur to create that brown color. But first we need fire. The cat's my favorite animal, the lion. Well, of course. And You're in cougar country. And I was thinking, <laughs> the cougar at BYU, is That's it right. wrong? Hey! All right, we've seen a lot of the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys that sandblast and mm -hmm. this and that and heating up the molds and all that and all the carving. How does that uh, blend in with the artistic aspect of the profession? Well, I'd like to think of myself somewhat as an engineer. Uh, I, I have to think in terms of uh, how the piece is going to go together from start to finish. When I'm even sculpting it, I'm thinking about all the different processes and how it's going to end up at the end. I try not to have undercuts that are going to be uh, too hard to deal with, for example. And so it's very blended, the, both the engineering and the, the artistic aspect of it. Uh, for example, again, we talked about patina. Patina, you need to have a, a knowledge of chemicals in order to apply it artistically. In order to be able to uh, do the wax chasing, you need to understand uh, heat on the, uh, on the wax. If it's too thin, then it'll begin to warp the, the sculpture. So there's lots of aspects involved throughout the entire process, and I would consider every person that works here an artist in their own right. In fact, they, they actually call them different artists. So you have a wax pour artist, a wax chase artist, a metal, metal artist, a patina artist. Uh, that's why I came to work here 
over 20 years ago um, because I knew that there was a great deal of artistry involved in the whole process. I actually came in with a portfolio of paintings that I had done as, a, uh, as an amateur artist and then they told me to go into the metal room and learn how to weld. So I came with an art uh, skill and then they taught me the, the uh, technical skills afterward. Some of them start more with a technical skill and then move into the art skills. Oh. So um, I've actually trained people who were graduates in college uh, with bachelors and so forth in art uh, how to do the, uh, the foundry process. So you just start with whatever people have and if they're willing, you can train them. Well, thank you, Raymond Gibby, for a way, way fun show. Well, I appreciate you guys coming and uh, seeing what I do. Oh, it's been way fun. Yep. Uh, where did Goose go? Oh, no. He did it again. We lose him all the time. He's a, that kind of guy. Well, let's see if we can find him. There's red over here. What's that tell you? <laughs> right here, baby. <laughs> right here. Wicked fun. Hey, we'd just like to close our show and thank our guest. Boy, he's been a dandy guest, hasn't he, Trav? Old Ray Gibby. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you being on our show. Thanks for and, coming. as usual, guys, it's a great day out there, isn't it? Trav, great day. <laughs> and remember, we, we love, love you. you. We, we truly do. do. And we'll catch you on our next show. We're out of here.